Hello everyone and Assalamu Alaikum Welcome to what I'm calling the most halal MMA video ever So today I'm gonna be answering a few questions that I get asked often um, As a Muslim and I am a Muslim and I do train in mixed martial arts Is it harm to fight? What about my dress code? What, do I, what happens if I have to train with women? What happens if I have to train with men? Will they be playing music in the class? What happens if, the, if it's time for Maghrib, Asr, Aisha, Salah? All these questions. I can answer some of them and I will try my best. So, without further ado, let's get started. MMA, uh, what is known to be mixed martial arts. As a Muslim, I suppose there are a few different dynamics. Now, I just want to make something very clear. I am in no way a sheikh. I am in no way a mufti. I am in no way here to pass a fatwa. What is halal and haram? I'm not here to decide that. I'm merely here offering you my perspective and perhaps my advice as a Muslim, a practicing Muslim who has trained in martial arts all of his life. Now, I do understand there will be some challenges and there will be some sort of concerns. Let's say concerns about uh, training in a context sport as a Muslim. So, ultimately, I want to start with the very beginning. When people start in martial arts, they start for one of three reasons. One, probably to get fit. Two, to learn how to defend themselves. And three, probably just they don't really know where it's going, so they just want to learn a new skill. One of three things. That applies to everyone. That will apply to the average person and the average Muslim walking into an MMA gym. Now say you do aspire to compete. Okay, so probably the first concern is striking in the face. And as we know, in the Islamic faith, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has specified that it is forbidden to strike someone, to hit someone in the face, even as a form of punishment. Yes, that is true. Now, I am not, I, again, I'm not a sheikh. You are welcome to research that in your own time on the internet or speak to your local sheikh about it. But I would like to also address this by saying, firstly, when you walk into an MMA gym, remember, Muhammad وسلم, also stated that every action are judged by their intentions. Actions are judged by their intentions. There is a sahidi hadith. On this, so the first thing you want to do is check your intention. Why am I training? Literally just goal setting. And this is nothing out of the ordinary. When you start a new activity, when you start a new course, when you start a new sport, you kind of have a few ideas in mind. When you go to the gym, why am I going to the gym? What am I doing it for? So if you starting in MMA, first thing you want to do is check your intention. What am I doing it for? What are my goals? What I would like to achieve? What value will I derive from this? And who will it benefit? Literally, those few questions. And this is my advice number one. Do not approach it from the perspective of, I want to become the next ultimate fighter, or I want to become a champion, or I want to earn money from this. If you are starting off from the very beginning, no experience, and you're walking into an MMA gym, start off from the ideology or the perspective of that I am a student of knowledge and I'm here to seek knowledge and I'm here to seek knowledge that's beneficial. Knowledge that will hopefully equip me to defend myself should I ever be in such a situation. Knowledge that will help me teach others how to defend themselves. Because the reality is the sport of mixed martial arts is probably one of few martial arts now, mixed martial arts is a sport in its own, right? One of few combat sports that actually has an extensive pressure testing, meaning that whatever you train, whatever you learn, is going to be tested against live resistance so you know if it's effective or not. There's no hocus-pocus and mythical creatures here. It's all tested. If you learn how to kickbox, if you learn how to wrestle, if you learn how to take someone down, at some point you are going to spar with an opponent, try to take him down, or you're going to you're going to punch, you're going to kick, you're going to apply those techniques. So what I'm saying is, if your intention is to learn self-defense, 
it is likely that MMA is a good start in terms of actually trying to gain a few tools that will be effective. So that's my advice. First, check your intention. Now, I don't want to make this video about the aspect of striking someone in the face. However, it is likely one of the main topics or main areas of concern. So I'm, I'm unfortunately going to have to give it some due time here. Uh, as I mentioned before, I am not a sheikh. And I acknowledge that striking another human being in the face is haram and is forbidden. And I accept that. And my stance is that whatever it is in the Sharia or in Islam, I'm not going to debate with that. I'm not going to try and prove it differently. However, I am just providing a different perspective, a logical, analytical, critical thinking perspective. Right. Let's go back to the beginning. Back in 1993, there was something founded by the Gracies and the Zaffa family, an Italian family and the Gracie family called the UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship. You most definitely heard of it. Now, the early days of the UFC, if you haven't seen it, was literally a style versus style type of setup with very few rules. Essentially what they decided is like, let's get all the good styles together. Let's put them in uh, a ring or a cage and let's see which style succeeds. Karate, Taekwondo, uh, Jiu Jitsu, Judo, wrestling, right? Eight man tournament, see who's the victor, who is the ultimate fighter. And what we learned from that was that a lot of the techniques trained in karate or traditional styles weren't effective. Here was a platform to now test those theories and test those assumptions or what was taught and passed down from master to student. So let me just pause there for a second and let's go back. Prior to 1993, if you ever picked up a black belt magazine or you happen to watch an 80s style movie, uh, a martial arts movie, a Van Damme movie, or a Bruce Lee movie, that was the 70s. I mean, the amount of techniques and stuff in there that just really didn't apply to real life, couldn't have applied. However, there were a lot of people claiming to be masters and a lot of people claiming that their style would be effective. Literally, they, they, they're still to this very day, there are people who believe that without touching you, they can use their chi or their ki and they can knock you out. Something like out of Dragon Ball Z. And or oh, the techniques and use this elbow and use this takedown. There was literally like a self-defense program for everything. Like aerobic self-defense, karate self-defense, gym fitness self-defense. And I'm not exaggerating. And it's all the hocus pocus, Muslim fable. So what happened in 1993, which was literally kind of like the early, the beginning of modern day MMA, UFC. I mean, before that, there was kind of like shoot fighting and all these things. But the UFC essentially put all these things together. And it was an experiment. We're conducting an experiment. It's trial and error. And we're going to see what happens. Now, what happened from that exercise over the years? There was a development in martial arts and in the sport of MMA. Now, when I say that, I mean, as time went on and theories were debunked and, and techniques were proven to be effective and disproven, people began to realize, martial arts began to realize that, look, we need to adapt to these certain techniques and styles that's actually going to work. And things like wrestling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Thai boxing and etc. Okay, it's from this experiment in the cage of the UFC. Now, from the perspective of going back to the point on the question, like, is it halal or haram? Well, it is haram to strike in the face. And I agree with that. But without this exercise of having people compete in competition, in a legal competition, in a legal format, we wouldn't have access to this layer, these layers of knowledge. And I mean, what came out of this experiment 
in this exercise of the UFC and MMA is that we extracted this little bit of knowledge that can be taught, passed down now to students and it empowers people that when me as a coach myself, I teach my student, okay, shoot for the double leg takedown, um, secure the position inside control and improve your position to the mount, etc. I'm just giving a vague example here. I know that works. That's That's been trial and tested. As opposed to saying, hey, do a rising block and do a forearm block and punch and then use two fingers and strike him in the eyes. Like, there's a vast difference. And the whole reason why I am able to teach my students and other instructors to uh, uh, able to teach their students of, about what is effective and can work is through this legal form of combat called MMA. Now, what I'm saying is, again, as a Muslim and as an instructor, I have an amana, I have a trust. Every time a student walks into my gym, or every time a student walks on the mats and requests me to teach them something that will be beneficial to their life, I, they are entrusting me to equip them with the tools that will in fact be effective for them. And I have to try and provide them with something that is actually trial and tested and can work, at least that I'm sure it could work in most cases. And I say that my reasoning is that going back to the issue of striking people in the face or getting punched in the face. I would say that the training and the learning aspect of it, it's uh, to an extent in the context of martial arts and learning how to defend themselves and preparing oneself for battle in terms of combat sports and self-defense. It's a necessary part of the journey. This part is necessary. It's necessary for everyone to experience pressure to experience what's it like to get hit and what it's like to hit someone else. Because if we don't experience that, then we just lie to ourselves. And as Muslims, it's important for us to teach the truth and ensure we empower people with something that is true and pure. Again, obviously, obviously, from a perspective of sport and earning a living and going into the details of um, just punching people in the face and get paid for it, I'm not here to debate about that. I am very aware what is the Islamic ruling on that. And my advice is, again, check your intention. So, I think that addresses probably one of the main concerns people would have, uh, Muslim students would have, of striking in the face. And again, check your intention. And really, just don't overthink it. I mean, you're starting off. You're starting off and you're going to be learning a few techniques. And I mean, if you go to a, a good gym with a with a coach with like like a good head on his shoulders, he's not going to put you in like any any competition or sparring within at least the, f well, no competition within literally the first six months and no sparring probably within like the first two months. Give or take, it depends. So there you have it, that is uh, my take on getting punched in the face and training MMA as a Muslim, uh, how should you approach it, and what type of reasoning you should apply. I hope it makes sense, I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see more videos like this, please hit the like and subscribe, and comment down below your thoughts, I'm open to hearing your suggestions. Cool, take care, goodbye, and assalamu alaikum.